Hello again. I want to talk to you today about a dynamics problem involving pulleys. Now I've been getting questions like this from my students and I think it's probably good to do a video clip on this. This is a, a problem where the answer is not obvious and you can't just intuit it. You have to go through a very specific process and you have to do some calculations. You have to do them correctly. Um, what we've got here is a surface with a 100 kilogram weight on it and a 300 kilogram weight down here. They're joined by a rope that goes over two pulleys and I guess I've got it drawn in there kind of crooked, but there's a coefficient of friction between weight A and that surface there of one quarter. Okay, and what we're trying to do is find the acceleration of A. Now, it's easy to get this wrong by uh, getting signs mixed up. There's, there's a, I'm going to show you a process here that I think will uh, is general enough it'll work every time. So what our process is going to be, I'm going to write the solution here, we're going to find the initial motion. Yeah, let's take that back. We're going to find the um, magnitude of the accelerations first. Okay, we want to find out how the acceleration of B is related to the acceleration of A. All right. Next thing we want to do is find the initial motions. And the third thing we want to do is find AA, and we're going to do that using uh, dynamic uh, analysis. We're going to uh, using dy dynamic equilibrium analysis. Okay, so that's the big picture. This is the path we're going to walk down. First thing we want to do is find magnitudes of the accelerations. Well, the easiest way to do that that I know of is to start looking at the length of the rope. The length of that rope doesn't change as weights A and B move. And so we can, we can learn something about that by, no, by making a couple of assignments here. Okay, That distance there between the hub of that pulley and the hub of that one I'll call SB. And from the end of the weight to the hub of that pulley I'll call SA. Now there's some other lengths here. I guess I can call this H. And that distance around there, I'll call SP for the uh, half, half circumference of the pulley. Now this, the rope is going to be in contact with the pulley for half of SP, okay, which is actually a quarter of the circumference. The length of the rope is SA plus 2SB plus H plus uh, 1.5 SP. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the things that vary over here and the things that don't vary I'm going to put over here. Okay, All this stuff here is constant. That means this stuff doesn't change as these two weights move around. These do change. Okay? If I take a derivative of this expression here, what I'm going to get is 0 equals the time derivative of a, which is, of distance a, which is velocity at a, plus 2vb. If I take another derivative, do it again, I get 0 equals aa plus 2ab. Right? Now, if I carry the algebra out, what I'm going to see is AA equals minus 2AB. Now, for right now, all I need to know is the magnitudes. Right now, I'm going to just, just uh, notice that AA is twice AB. That minus sign actually isn't going to be there because of the way we're going to choose our coordinate system. Okay. So right now, I'm going to write this. Okay. I'm only looking at magnitudes, not direction. Magnitudes. Okay, that's why I get to get rid of that minus sign. Okay, so we've done part one. Okay. All right, the initial motions. We're going to need to know which directions these things are going when, uh, when uh, time equals zero. So what I'm going to look at is the static force required to get that to move that way and the static re force required to get that to move down, and we're going to compare the two. 
So this is going to be a static analysis. Okay. Well, this one's easy. That tension is going to the, the tension required to get A to start moving is going to equal the friction force. Okay, we're static now. We're not talking dynamic, so mass doesn't matter yet. It will in a minute. Okay. Well, that's mu m a times g. Well, that's one fourth times one hundred kilograms times nine point eight one meters per second squared, and that comes out to be let's see two forty five point one seven. Newtons. Okay, that's that's the force that is going to be required. Do I have that in the frame? I do. Good. That's going to be the force required to get mass A moving. Okay. Let's find out. Let's let's look at B now. Now I've got m B times G, and I've got up here two T because if I were to cut right there, I can see the tension in that rope is appears twice. Okay. We're not looking at the tension there, we're looking at the tension here because we're trying to see what's going on with that rope. All right? Well, that's easy. Here, all we got to do, do now is notice that 2t equals 300 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, or the t, force required to uh, move the weight here, is now. Make sure I get this right. One four one seven newtons. That's the tension that this applies to the rope. To uh, the rope, just sitting there, where we just released from static motion. Because this number is bigger than this number, initial motion is down. down at B and to the right at A. Okay, that's important. Okay, so now we know this. We've got the, uh, mo the directions of the motion worked out. So we've done that and we've done that. Okay? So the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to find A using dynamic equilibrium. F equals MA is really what this is. Okay, so I'm going to have to erase this now because I've got a small board. What we're going to do now is we're going to draw two free body diagrams, and they're going to be dynamic free body diagrams. They're going to have inertial forces in them. Okay, so let's do this. This is A. So I've got tension that way. Now, I don't know what tension is yet because this is dynamic tension. It's not static tension. All right? I'm going to have a friction force, and that's going to be M a times g times mu, okay? and I'm also going to have what I call an inertial force, and that's going to be ma aa. The inertial force goes in the opposite direction of the acceleration. Now, in case you haven't seen this, this way of doing things before, in the most technical sense there is no such thing as inertial force, but when I write f equals ma, that's got the units of force, MA does. When I treat MA like a force, I get the right answer. So as a calculation tool, I'm going to call the, the, the inertial force that resists excel, the apparent force that resists acceleration, I'm going to call that inertial force. All right? When I sum these up, I'm going to get F equals MA. All right? So that's how this is going to work. And I'm going to assume positive in the direction of motion. So I'm going to get MA, let me write that more correctly here. M A A A minus, that's negative minus M A here, let's, let's do it this way. Mu G M A right there plus T equals zero or tension equals M A A A plus mu G M A. Right? So there's there's the uh, equations of equ dynamic equilibrium for uh, mass A. So let's write that up here. There we go. 
that's a, an intermediate result. Let's get rid of this now. Clear out some little bit more real estate. Last thing to do, last two things to do, we're going to write the dynamic equilibrium for mass B, and then we're going to solve this set of equations that we've come up with. So here's mass B. Okay. Now, I know the initial motion is down. Okay. And because I know the initial motion is down, that means the inertial force is going to go up. Inertial forces act opposite to the direction of acceleration. So let's see, there's only one force down, and that's weight, mv times g. That's going to be 2t, that's those, those uh, two sides of that rope that are pulling up, and the inertial force, which is mvab. Right? Again, I'm going to write out equations of equilibrium. So I'm going to say minus, uh, let's do it this way, minus 2t minus mvab plus mv g equals zero. So that stuff's in the negative direction, that stuff's in the positive direction. All right? Um, if, if, let's, let's just leave that like it is. Write this up here. Okay. Almost done now. All I've got to do now is a little bit of algebra. And I can solve this. What I'm looking for is AA. So first thing I'm going to do, I already have an expression for T. I'm going to plug that in here. Remember, tension here has to equal tension down there. That's the assumption uh, we have with the rope. So I'm going to be minus 2 times mu g m a minus m v a b plus m zero. All right? Getting there. Now, the next thing I've got to do is replace AB with something that looks like AA. All right? If I'm going to do that, let's see, i got something here. To, got that, got that. Okay, I'm good. Um, right now, I know that AB equals AA over 2. All right? Again, we're talking about magnitudes up here. These equations include directions. So anywhere I see AB, I'm going to put AA over 2. So right there, I'm going to replace AB with AA over 2. And the last thing I'll have is one equation that contains, well, the only unknown is AA. Solve for AA, and I'll be good to go. So minus 2, MAAA plus mu G, MA minus MB, A, a over 2, m, b, g equals 0. Okay, if you write all that out, I'm running out of time here, so let me write this out for you. This is just some algebra you got to do here. Gee, that's an m, sloppy m. Okay, there's the numerator, and the denominator of this expression is m, b, 2 plus 2ma. Assuming I didn't mess up here, that's the expression. And what you get when you solve this is 7.005 meters per second squared. Also, if, is that in the frame? Eh, I just got it, okay. If mu equals 0, then AA equals 8.40 per second squared. So there you go. We did this in three steps. We found the magnitudes of the acceleration. Magnitudes, there's no directions up there. We looked for initial motions using a static analysis to establish the directions of motion. And then once we did that, we found AA using dynamic equilibrium analysis. So there you go. And there's your answer.